Next, tragedy strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. On 911, a baby is bitten by ants. She's choking. Oh, God, she's choking. And her father makes a desperate dash to save her life. I was doing all I could do to get to that ambulance. I never prayed so hard in my life. We begin on April 7th, 1991, in a rural area outside Macon, Georgia, where Leslie Mosley and her family were enjoying a quiet Sunday afternoon at home. We're a very close family. We um, very rarely go anywhere without the kids. We just play in the yard with the swings and have picnics and just, our kids are our life. While Leslie watched her son and 16-month-old daughter, Tony, in the yard, her husband, Ken, was inside with a friend. Me and my buddy, John Matthew, were in the house watching television. We were just kind of kicked back. It was a pretty day. Tony, go swing with Daniel. Tony can do anything that her three-year-old brother can do. She keeps right up with him. She's tough. We live in the country and have to watch out for bees and and insects and spiders and everything. And she never cries when she gets bit. I don't understand why, because I know it hurts. <laughs> Tony, are you okay? <laughs> she fell down, hands first in the ant bed. And she didn't cry, but she sort of whimpered. Okay, baby. It's all right. They are so vicious that as soon as you disturb their nest, they're they're out, and they're everywhere. They're just swarming. Oh, I know, I know. They were all in her socks and her shoes and everything. So I got them off over, and they started biting me. Oh God. Oh. Okay, let's get away from these ants. Okay. All right, you okay? Leslie could see more than a dozen fire ant bites on her baby girl. I knew that she had had 53 bites before. So I said, well, you'll be all right, and put her in the baby swing so they, she couldn't get back down in it. Let me go call Daddy. Then I got to thinking about it, and I said, what if she does have a reaction? What if I'm not watching her? Ken! Can you come outside My wife collared. Hey, Tony's been bit by ants. Can you come outside and watch her for a little while, see if she's going to be okay? When I went outside, I wasn't expecting anything. Uh, she's never had a problem, no reaction whatsoever, no pain. She never really even scratched them. Tony, you okay, baby? You okay? She would not okay, respond baby. to any kind of talk or anything. Come on, look at Daddy. Look at Daddy, look at Daddy. She was just kind of in a daze. Tony, John, she's looking bad. You got her eyes open. Yeah. Tony, Tony. Leslie, she don't look too good. She got some spots on her face. Oh, Are you hurting? She was perspiring, had uh, white spots on her face. Tony? Are you okay? I just knew that she was having a reaction. And I knew then that, that we had to do something immediately. Tony, look at Daddy, baby. Are you okay? Are you okay, baby? Tony? Tony? She's choking. Oh, God, she's choking. She was just gasping for air. Her little lips were all swollen up. 
and her uh, eyes were about swollen shut. My little girl was in trouble. We'll take care of you. By the time he got her inside, she was having a seizure. I knew then that we didn't have time to wait for the ambulance to get out here because um, we lived so far out in the country. So I decided that he better go and just meet the ambulance down the road. The toughest part was letting Ken go with her and not knowing if she would be alive when I got to her. When we continue, I thought she was dead. All I could think of on the way to the hospital was, God, please don't take my baby. Come on, darling, don't doubt me now, please. You're not totally comfortable in the tampon you're wearing. Maybe you're wearing the wrong tampon. Get Playtex Gentle Glide, the only one that blooms to fit for unbeatable comfort and protection. Playtex, so comfortable you can't even feel them. After suffering more than a dozen fire ant bites, 16-month-old Tony Mosley developed a violent rash and began seizing and gasping for air. Her father put her in the car and headed for the hospital, while her mother, Leslie, called 911. At 11.45 a.m., Leslie's call for help came in to Macon Bibb Fire Dispatcher, C.C. Hendricks. She said he would be in a black uh, late model Mercury, and he'd have his like, headlights on, his emergency flashes on. down the road. You got a potential to have a real bad situation when you try to intercept people on the way to the hospital. Because those few minutes, uh, he could have an accident. And so you don't want to miss him. Man, go ahead. Paramedic Keith Souls and his partner were sent to intercept Ken's car. The dispatcher passed on to them Leslie's description of the car and the exact route Ken was taking. It's just horrifying. There's no way you can prepare yourself. I had no idea what was going on in that car. Come on, darling. Come on, baby. It's going to be okay. I was trying to drive one hand and keep her alert. I didn't know if it would do any good. I was just trying to keep her mind on, on something around her, you know, to keep her alert to where she would try to breathe. And I was hustling. We were concerned that the child airway would swell to the point that it would be completely closed up and that it wouldn't be able to breathe. People die from allergic reactions quite frequently, from ant bites, wasp, a lot of different things. Leslie headed for the hospital as quickly as possible, following the same route her husband had taken. All I could think of on the way to the hospital was, God, please don't take my baby. You can never replace a child. Even if you had another one, it wouldn't be the same. By the time Ken reached the divided highway, the ambulance still had not caught up with him. Tony's condition continued to deteriorate. Come on, darling. I was doing all I could do to get to that ambulance. I was afraid that maybe they would miss me or I would miss them because everything was a blur. Come on, talk to me, Tony. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Talk to daddy. Come on. I seen the ambulance coming down the other side, and I was hoping it was the right ambulance. From the location that the call originally came, we had no idea where along the route that he would meet us. By the time we got to the interstate, we said he must have missed him. He must have just gone on to the hospital. So about that time, here comes the ambulance off the interstate. Not wanting to risk getting stuck in the median, the paramedics had gone to the next exit to turn around. Turn this way. Go. Go. He's already gone. Go. They went, and we went, and we pulled on the interstate, and there was Ken pulled over on the side of the road, and uh, he had Tony in his arms. Oh, God. And I oh, thought God. she was dead. I, I couldn't move. I was frozen. Paramedic Jim Walsh took over Tony's care. The baby had a gurgling sound in the upper airways. Probably by fluid buildup. The uh, potential was there for that child to die. The child was trying to cry, but was in a respiratory state where it really couldn't. It was having to concentrate 
it's total effort on breathing. After suctioning Tony's airway, Jim radioed ahead to Coliseum Medical Centers to alert them about her condition. A trauma team there was headed by Dr. Tim Graves. Her condition was sort of at the break point, if you will, where she was either going to get better or get worse uh, fairly quickly. The main objective initially was to improve the oxygen flow to her vital organs by giving her supplemental oxygen and to begin reversing the allergic reaction with uh, medicine called epinephrine, or some people know it as adrenaline. I couldn't even get near her because there were five or six people working on her. I've never prayed so hard in my life. Let's keep your breath going. They gave her a shot, and within minutes, she was screaming. They kept telling me it's good that she's screaming because she's breathing, and I was going, no, I don't think so. <laughs> she's hurting, you know, and I had to go out and cry for a while, but I got it out of my system, and I felt better. It's been a month since the incident. Tony's back to normal, and she can do everything that normal kids do, as well as wrap Daddy around her little finger. I'm very grateful to the emergency room people and the guys in the ambulance. Uh, I didn't even catch their names, but I'm proud of them. They did good. I never have liked being an overprotective mother, but now I'm, I'm having to become one because I can't turn her loose in the yard like an ordinary child. I have to watch if there's a bee or if there's an ant hill or anything. I have to watch. I have to be there with her. In Tony's case, I think that it was a wise decision to try to meet the ambulance rather than waiting it out. The entire allergic reaction can go from start to finish in a very uh, devastating end in a matter of a few minutes. If Tony is ever bitten or stung again by a fire ant, bee, or wasp, she could suffer an even more deadly allergic reaction. So her parents now carry with them a medical kit that contains epinephrine the same drug given to her at the hospital. If she's with me, it's in my purse. If she's at my mother-in-law's, I leave it there, but have epinephrine and we'll travel. She should grow up okay. She's playful and spunky and smart and wild, and <laughs> she gives her brother a hard time. I guess the best thing that came out of it was knowing that you can maintain your cool when you know you have to, when you know your child's life depends on you. Your child's fun. life is precious. Give daddy a kiss. Kiss daddy, kiss daddy. Ah. Kiss daddy. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.